I am uh, Dr. Jason Restein. I'm a uh, UCLA plastic surgeon, and I'm here to talk to you about body contouring. Please f feel free to join us and ask questions on Twitter using the hashtag um, UCLAMDChat. So today I want to kind of go over the whole spectrum of body contouring, and that really includes everything from mommy makeovers to post-massive weight loss. And they're, they're basically along a spectrum, and, and I'll kind of go over that one being a um, little less work need to be done and, and with a massive weight loss where you know there's a lot more considerations. So I'm going to go over the pros and cons of having this type of surgery done. I'm going to talk about safe body contouring, go over some uh, before and after so you get an idea of what to expect, and some modern techniques and some research that I'm involved with uh, that I'll talk to you about. And then we'll try to go over some top questions and some main takeaways and then see if you have any questions at the end. So starting with mommy makeovers, what are the issues that, that most of my patients come in and kind of really start thinking about this surgery? So, so number one, there's often after, after you have a pregnancy, there's a lot of stretching of the skin and actually the muscles below it. So, so with that, you can see a lot of stretch marks. You get the abdominal bulge, and that comes from the, the muscles uh, being kind of stretched out as well. Then you also go through the process of breastfeeding, and that really fills up the breast with milk. And again, the skin stretches with that. And then after you're done with the breastfeeding process, it leaves what you know, most pa patients just call saggy breasts. Medically, we call it totic breasts. And then that also le leads to skin issues. When your skin takes on a lot of that stretch, it loses some of its elasticity, and it, it decreases the quality of your uh, skin. And again, you can see stretch marks and just excess skin. And there's really no secret for excess skin. You, you sometimes just have to cut it out. And then compare this to, to patient post-massive weight loss where they have extreme amounts of, of excess skin, so much that it could even cause them back stress, it could cause hygiene issues with rashes and infection, it could cause difficulty with clothing and activity, and really emotional distress. It's, it's sometimes just as hard um, you know, after they went through all that uh, massive weight loss and they're still left with all this excess hanging skin, it's hard to function and, and does uh, take an emotional toll. And again, all those same skin issues are there, but even more so than sometimes pregnancy, just with the, the loss of skin elasticity and the poor skin quality we mentioned. So what are the pros of, of body contouring and why get this done? So, so we, we found that our patients generally have improved self-esteem after having the surgery. It even improves their activity. Um, they're, they're more likely to go to the gym often even when you're talking about mommy makeovers, but definitely with patients that had massive weight loss, they're just able to, to move more freely when they take off that weight and hanging skin. Um, it improves the hygiene. And when you don't have folds of skin, folds of skin on top of each other cause excess moist, moisture. And um, you can get fungal infections. You can get redness, rashes. Uh, and so overall, it can even just help, uh, help your uh, hygiene. And then your clothes fit better. And that's, that's always a good thing. Here's a quick example of a patient who was post-massive uh, weight loss, a lot of hanging skin. Um, and we're able to uh, give him a nicer overall body shape, and he was very happy for that. So what are the downsides? So, so there's no secret. Like I said, there's excess skin. There's only one way to get rid of it. You've got to cut it out, and that comes at the cost of a scar. Now, I think in general, these are cosmetically acceptable in most patients, but they can sometimes be visible. Um, and it's, it is important to know that you know, there are a lot of treatments for scars if you end up needing. Most of my patients um, scar really well and do not need ex additional treatments. But let's say there was excess redness that was persistent. You can, we can uh, do lasers and other scar creams to help minimize that. But you have to keep in mind there's a chance that they could still be visible. And that's definitely a potential downside. And then there's always the, the new normal complications that, that uh, can happen with any surgery. Um, and so we always worry about wound healing complications, um, what's called a seroma or fluid collection under the skin, hematoma, which is basically a blood collection under the skin, infection, and of course, blood clots. So, so we really try to um, you know, make surgery as safe as possible, but we can never eliminate all the risks. Um, but we only proceed when we really feel like we can minimize those ri risks to an appropriate level. And I'm going to talk about safe body contouring surgery in a little bit as well. And then, of course, there's a downtime and a, and a recovery to, to any surgery. And so you have to be uh, willing to take some, some time off from work, often usually at least a couple weeks, if not three, and um, just uh, take time to recover. And you, you have to step away from the gym for a while, for instance, um, usually about six weeks for that. Uh, and you know, these are all considerations and, and downsides. So you gotta, you got to figure out um, how to make this surgery work for your life and your schedule. So how do we make body contouring safe? 
So the, one of the main things is weight considerations. We really want you to be at, a, number one, a stable weight, uh, meaning you're not going through major uh, weight fluctuations because that, again, can change the results. And we want to have a good end goal for you. And uh, secondly, we want to make sure your BMI is less than 30. We've, we have a lot of data, a lot of research has been done on patients that have BMI greater than 30. And as it get, goes higher, even greater than 35, the complication rates just go higher and higher. And there's, you know, with a lot of this, a lot of it's done for aesthetic reasons to look better as well. And there's really no reason to take on additional risks. So things like wound healing issues, infection, um, all go up when the BMI is greater than 30. So that's an important point. And it's really easy to calculate your BMI. Just get on Google, type in BMI calculator, and it asks for your height and weight, and it'll uh, give you a number. And again, the number for us that we like to see is less, less than 30. Um, at times, we can, you know, if, if you're close to 30, we can also consider surgery. But I, I think that's an important number to hold on to. Then especially in the massive weight loss patient, there's been They've often had a room wide ga uh, gastric bypass or even just um, a uh, uh, stapling of the stomach to re reduce its size. We always have to be worried about nutritional de deficiencies. The main ones we see are B12, folate, iron, vitamin D, zinc, and selenium. So we really want to make sure we do our due diligence and check your labs, make sure your nutrition is good. And another important one is your protein intake. So we check labs like albumin and prealbumin to make sure that your protein is at, at the appropriate level. For normal, for normal uh, um, uh, people, we recommend about one to two uh, milligrams per kilogram on a normal basis. You want to increase this about 1.5 to two times as much uh, around the time of surgery. Usually we have you begin two to four weeks before surgery, and we want you to continue it for about a month postoperatively. Um, and uh, you know, that basically gives you the building blocks for your, for your wound healing, and that's an important factor to uh, make the surgery as safe as possible. So more considerations for surgery, we want the surgery to be around six hours total. You shouldn't be under anesthesia for longer uh, than that for anything that's elective and that we can control. So what that means is, um, you know, especially in the massive weight loss patient, we have to stage the surgeries. Now, uh, mommy makeovers, uh, we typically, typically uh, can do both the abdomen and breast, which are the main issues that uh, uh, patients get with the mommy, mommy uh, makeover. And we can do that in one surgery, and it'll take about six hours. But that's really our limit. And then when we're talking about the massive weight loss patient, then, then we want to stage it again. The usual first stage is doing the abdomen or a body lift. And then um, in the second stage, often we'll do the breast uh, or the lateral chest if there's excess skin there. In the third stage, we'll do the extremities, meaning the arms. Um, and I'll go through each of these surgeries in, in detail so you understand what I'm talking about. But we'll usually do the, the arms and thighs at that. And then often we leave the, the face for last. And that's, that's an option. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So here's just an example of a patient that had a circumferential body lift and also the medial thighs done as well. Um, and it's circumferential because it, it, the scar, you can see, goes all the way around. But it allows us to dress all the excess uh, tissue all the way around. This patient also went on to have her breast done. Again, had a, a breast lift with, with implants and had a very nice result. Here's a, another view of, of the same patient. And uh, also. Um, patient had a uh, what's called a brachioplasty or arm lift. Again, um, the downside with this, there, you know, you could see a, a scar on the inside. We put in the most inconspicuous spot possible, kind of on that inner uh, aspect of the arm where you can only see it when you raise your arm. Uh, and overall, I think it's worth it to get the improved contour of the arm. And then the uh, medial thigh, um, which, which uh, similar to the arm, again, you got to uh, have a uh, be okay with having the scar, but we're able to improve that excess skin you have in, in the overall contour. And then, as I talked about, often a patient will choose in the fourth stage to have a facelift as well. And uh, you could see a dramatic effect in both the face and neck. Um, that that uh, is a great result. And these are all patients that uh, I uh, operated on. Um, so what's the recovery like? So when we're talking about the body surgery, especially with the abdomen, there's a lot of dissection. And you have to have um, drains, and usually they, they stay in from anywhere from one to two weeks. And that's just an average. Sometimes it could be less. Sometimes it could be a little bit more. But that's Im important for you to, to know and something that you would go home with and be able to have to manage. And they're just basically plastic tubes that come out of the skin. And then you, we, we need you to record the amount of fluid that comes, off, comes out of that. So you also want to plan for ta taking time off work. These are big surgeries. They do take some recovery. So you want to take at least, at least two weeks off of work, if not even three. 
um, depending on what you do. Now, if it's, if it's an office job, it may be reasonable after two weeks, but you have to potentially plan on not feeling ready at two weeks, and, and we do see that from time, time to time. And you really don't want to uh, partake in any significant activity until about six weeks. We want your scars to be relatively well healed before you really start doing activities. And, and really, it's not until three months that you could go back to full activity, and that's important for you to know. The first two weeks, we also really want you to pay attention to your blood pressure and heart rate. We don't want to get that up uh, too high, and that can cause an increased bruising uh, and, uh, and uh, bleeding under the skin, potentially, by getting your, your blood pressure up. Lastly, it takes a full year for the scars to all mature fully. And when I, when I mean fully mature, that means it's going to soften and lighten over the course of the year. So it'll continue that process. And, and the last one is really the softening. It takes a full year to fully soften. The, light, uh, the redness of a scar usually starts to fade about, at about six months, sometimes less, some, um, sometimes more. But again, a full year for that. If you have persistent redness, then we, can, um, we have uh, treatments such as the scar creams I talked about and the... Um, and uh, lasers that help with that, so it's important to keep in mind. So I'm just going to go through some of the uh, procedures, and and uh, all the procedures I'm talking about are generally aesthetic procedures. The one exception that can be covered uh, by insurance is what's called a paniculectomy. Now these are severe cases where you're going to remove a, a large uh, lower skin apron that really actually gives you both uh, can cause infections from again that skin touching skin, which causes excess moisture, and you could get fungal infections there. You also get rashes, and even to the point where the apron is hanging so low that it's blocking your ability to walk normally and definitely exercise. So again, this is the one that can be covered by insurance. So here's just a quick example of that. Now, this compared to a tummy tuck, notice the belly button stays, uh, doesn't get moved, but also it doesn't address anything of the upper abdomen. So when I go through my other pictures, you'll see um, a much nicer result with the uh, cosmetic abdominoplasty because we're able to lift up all the skin and really uh, remold all the, the, the skin and underlying muscle and fascia, which gives you overall a much better result. Um, and that's an important distinction between what's a paniculectomy and an abdominoplasty. So here's just a side view. Again, we're just getting rid of that hanging skin apron. Everything above that gets left behind. We actually, on purpose, don't want to lift any of that up um, because again, these patients are often heavier and they're above the BMI of 30 and the complication rate goes higher when you try to do a cosmetic type of abdominoplasty procedure. So this is a unique scenario and, and um, just wanted to go through the whole spectrum of body contouring and we're and, uh, starting with this one. So let's compare that to abdominoplasty or what's called a tummy tuck. Um, so again, this improves your overall contour of your trunk. It improves both your upper abdomen, your lower abdomen, and your flanks. And it also gives us the opportunity to tighten your abdominal wall. Um, again, using the mommy makeover example with pregnancy, both not only your skin, but the muscles uh, under the skin, uh, what's called your rectus muscle and its fascia, get stretched out and get loose and can cause, they number one, get widened and they could cause bulging. And we tighten that back up to, to where it was before your pregnancy so we can give you a better contour. And this, of course, does require a scar around the belly button. We hide it really well into the belly button um, to make it look as natural as possible. But um, basically, your belly button stays behind, and then we stretch down the, the, the skin from above over and make a, a new hole for it. But we, we do it in such a way that the scar really, um, in general, hides well inside the belly button. So here's just a, a, a quick, few quick examples. This is a cosmetic abdominoplasty. And you can see the scar often can be barely visible, and you can see the whole belly, top, bottom, has, has really improved contour when you compare it to the paniculectomy. Here's a, another example. It's a darker skin patient. Um, you can see the, the stretch marks that are above her belly button. You can't remove that. I think that's an important example and to kind of understand better what we're doing and we're accomplishing for you. Um, but again, the scars we put in the bikini line, I even have my patients show up the day of surgery in, in what they're um, lowest cut uh, underwear would be, and we try to make, try to make sure that the scar is below that. Uh, so we really go as low as possible. And here's another view of the same patient. Again, significant improvements both above and below the belly button. Overall, much uh, better contour. Another patient, a lot of excess skin. This is a massive weight loss patient. Chose to not just do the paniculectomy, have the cosmetic abdominoplasty, but her BMI was, in a, uh, was less than 30, and we're able to give her a great result get rid of all that hanging skin, both above and below the belly button, and she was very happy. 
So then there's some patients that have a lot of excess skin, and this really has to do with the massive weight loss patients that's both in front and behind. Um, and we do what's called a circumferential lift. This can actually even improve the lateral thighs because we get to the side and actually lift up the lateral thighs as well. Again, it gives us all the opportunity to do the same things that a tummy tuck does and tighten the anterior abdominal wall. But the scar basically extends all the way around to the back because that's where all the excess skin is. And as I said, there's really no secret to get rid of the excess skin. You gotta go all the way around. And this, this is what that patient uh, required. And you could see a significant improvement in the overall contour. And especially when, you, when you're talking about how he fits in clothes and even just uh, functionally you know, with uh, getting to the gym and everything, he's, he's much happier with getting rid of all that extra tissue. So moving on to the next procedure, now this pertains both to massive weight loss patients and to, to mommy makeovers is the mastopexy. So it's, and mastopexy is our medical word for lifting the breast. It's a breast lift. And um, again, we often can combine this with the implant when, you, when there's also a deflation of the volume. Uh, that's important to keep in mind. And this basically often requires what's called a J-shaped scar or the, what we call for a long time the anchor scar because it's a, a scar around the nipple, down for the nipple, and then under the breast. And it could, again, if it's an anchor, it goes both medial or laterally, or if it's a J-shape, it just goes laterally. Um, and uh, that's probably the most acceptable scar, though, because it really hides in the crease of the breast, and, and um, most patients are, don't mind that one. And uh, with the J-lift, often we can... Uh, extend around the lateral chest if you're a massive weight loss, have a lot of excess tissue on the side, which they often do, we can take care of that at the same time. So the, here's just an example, a patient really deflated breast, got both a breast lift, so lift up the nipple and also an implant. Um, this is a patient that just got a breast lift, no implants here, she already had very large breasts. Uh, again, a, a darker skin patient who tend to uh, not scar as well, but you know, you can see the scars are very acceptable. Uh, this is a, one of those anchor scars. Um, and now I'm going to move on to uh, brachioplasty, which is basically an upper arm lift. And the key here, this is one of the, the scars that we worry more about in, in plastic surgery, has a tendency to be a little bit more widened. So scar placement is key in this procedure. Um, and uh, again, it could be carried down the lateral chest as well with this procedure if you have uh, extra tissue there. But in general, we try to put the, the scar right along the intermedial border. Uh, so it's only visible when you really lift up your arm and kind of rotate it in. And I'm going to go through an example here. Um, you can see uh, the scar in general does heal very well, and the contour, especially from every other angle, is significantly improved. Um, and the patient's generally are happy, but you have to be willing to have what, what can end up a slightly visible scar. Again, we could do laser treatments and everything to make that slightly better, um, but that's, that's an important part to keep in mind. And there's really um, the, the medial thigh lift, is basically uh, same idea just for the leg. Again, has a has a scar and, uh, that extends the length of the ex excess skin. And I think overall, I, I find uh, most of these results uh, tend to be a little bit more modest, um, probably because the size of the leg is so much larger and it's hard to get a huge change. But here's what you can expect basically with a medial thigh lifts. Um, you know, a nice improvement um, and better contour again at the cost of a scar. You could see, see um, what we did there. So lastly, often the patient, and this really, um, you know, both mommy makeovers with aging, but also, again, the massive weight loss patient, you just, you know, both with aging, also mass, uh, large changes in weight, you end up having a lot of excess skin. And um, this, you know, uh, causes uh, more aging to the face uh, and, you know, often a, um, basically a uh, not clean neckline, so to speak. Uh, a lot of these patients just want to improve their neckline. Um, so, so like this patient here has a lot of fullness in the face um, and, uh, and uh, the, the neck bothered this patient. We're able to make a significant improvement, give her a nicer neckline, and she was very happy for that. Another patient, this was a massive weight loss patient. Again, just a lot of excess skin in the neck and we're able to improve her neckline and she was, she was very happy for that. Uh, moving on, so an ancillary procedure we often use in body contouring in general is liposuction. Uh, this is really, you can't remove excess skin with liposuction, when, and the benefit is there's basically no scarring. You have a pinhole scar where a small cannula goes in to literally just suck out the fat. With that in mind, though, when you do remove the fat, that can even leave sometimes excess skin. Some of that skin will bounce back, but depending on your age. If you're younger, it's a better procedure because your skin bounces back more and has more elasticity. When you're older, your massive weight loss, it's not a very good procedure unless it's combined with another 
with something like abdominoplasty. And I'm going to talk about some research uh, that I did on that. But basically, here's an example of liposuction. Overall, you know, nice result to kind of downsize the, the amount of uh, excess fat you have in the, the, uh, often in the abdomen region or the flanks. Uh, but again, you want to be a younger patient with good skin to get the best result unless it's combined with the abdominal plasty. And this is some research I, uh, I did. And uh, basically, we looked at the safety of performing both uh, liposuction and abdominal plasty at the same time. We use an imaging device to, to really demonstrate that and, and show that there was no um, increased problems with vascularity or wound healing problems. Uh, and this is a recent paper that came out just in um, uh, 2014 in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal. And we were able to document the safety of doing it uh, together. And, and that, uh, traditionally, a lot of plastic surgeons were separating the two procedures, doing first um, liposuction to get rid of all the fat, and then after that, having the patient come back three months later and doing the tummy tuck. When you're able to get in one procedure, obviously, it's nice for the patient, more convenient, one recovery. Um, and we are able to accomplish results like this, where this patient had a, both a lot of excess skin and fat. And there's no way to achieve that with a tummy tuck alone or liposuction alone. So being able to combine it, you're able to get a much nicer result um, with, with still without sacrificing safety, which is all, always ultimately the most important thing. So, so again, you know, I know I went over a lot of information. Um, you know, whether to consider uh, whether basically body contouring surgery is right for you, Again, I want to kind of emphasize the BMI less than 30. And again, you could go on Google and find a BMI calculator. You want to be stable weight for about six months. So if you're one of those people that's still working on their weight or you had recent, uh, you know, whether it was gastric bypass or some kind of weight loss surgery, you want to wait until you've maximized your weight loss and that it's been stable for six months and you're in a good place in terms of your eating habits and, and exercise and everything. You want to have good nutrition, and we'll check that through your labs, but you want to make sure um, your nutrition is optimized, especially in the, the massive weight loss patients or patients that had uh, prior gastric bypass surgery. You definitely cannot be a smoker. Smoking uh, increases wound healing complications dramatically, so no matter what surgery you're having done, you, you have to make sure you're um, off cigarettes for at least six weeks before the surgery and six weeks after, and we'll check your urine to make sure that's the case, because again, it's just not safe to proceed, and we got to make sure everything's perfect. You want to be in good general health, and then, you know, if you're considering this, you want, does the excess skin bother you more than, than a scar would? And if, it is, if, the, if the answer is yes, then you should probably consider this surgery. Or if you just want to look better in your clothes or you're unhappy in general with the shape of your body, come see us. We could talk about it. We can, we can help you out. So some of the top questions I got just to start the conversation, how long would the procedure take? Again, um, these can be staged procedures, multiple procedures. Again, we don't want the surgical time to be more than six hours for safety reasons. Not we want to, we're always keeping safety first, and, and that's, that's a rule of thumb there. How much pain will you have uh, after surgery? It really depends on the procedure. I'll, I'll say the most painful one tends to be the tummy tuck patients, where we have to actually tighten the muscles as well. And so you have sore muscles for a while. The breast procedures, if you're not putting an implant, tend to be a little less, uh, have less pain associated with them, because they're mostly just incisional pain, and they last usually only for like half a week to up to a week. Um, and uh, in terms of costs, a lot of these are cosmetic procedure. They, 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 the bill can run up. Um, I'd say in general, a lot of these, um, at least for the surgical fee, we generally run for our surgery time about $2,000 per hour. So if you're doing six hours surgery, just to give you a rule of thumb, this is a, a, a very broad average, about $10,000, $12,000 if it's going to take that long for the surgeon's fee alone. And then you have to think about that, paying the operating room and also the anesthesiologist. Is it safe? There's always risk with surgery, but we really do everything we can to minimize these, um, uh, those risks. And obviously, the risks up when the, only when the benefits outweigh the risks would we proceed with surgery. And I hope I gave you good information on when it is safe to proceed. And the recovery time in general, you, you know, two weeks, no uh, increase in heart rate or blood pressure, six weeks till you really start doing activities again or major activities, and three months back to full activity. All right, um, that's everything for me. Uh, if you have any, you, you're welcome to uh, visit my website at drjasonplastsurgery.com or give us a call um, at 310 825 8827 for a consultation. Let me know if there's any uh, questions from, from the Twitter. I guess we have a few. Okay. So, the first question is what about the electronic uh, stimulation or freezing the fat, like I've seen in some articles? So freezing the fat, there's a lot of billboards about it. Uh, this has been a lot of media. It's, it's a uh, new product, and it does work to 
uh, decreased fat. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, the, the results are very, very modest. So compared to liposuction, which I think is the main thing, there still hasn't been a study to compare them head to head. But I can tell you in general, when you're talking about freezing the fat, you're talking about very small incremental changes in the fat down to the millimeters, whereas liposuctions, you can get, you can get dramatic changes. So it kind of depends on the person. So I think freezing the fat is a reasonable option if you're someone with just a tiny bit of a little excess fat um, and you, you want to try to get that taken care of. I, I will say it takes often multiple stages to even get a, a result and the cost ends up being about the same as liposuction. Now in terms of recovery, um, the freezing the fat, you have to basically sit there with the cold panels on for about two hours. Liposuction procedure ov obviously takes time and is in general a, a more difficult recovery in terms of pain. You, you will sometimes require pain medications. There will be more swelling, et cetera, but you'll have a much more dramatic result. There's basically no, no secret when you're getting uh, rid of the fat, um, it does take some recovery. And if you want a more dramatic result, you can achieve that honestly with uh, liposuction um, compared to freezing the fat. And I hope I answered that well for you. Um, electronic stimulation, so far there's not any good data on that um, uh, as far as that uh, to downsize fat, so I, I don't recommend that. Um, how long will the surgeries last? Will I need revisions? So there's, with any surgery you do in the cosmetic realm, there's always a chance for needing revisions, really just because you're not completely happy with the result. Um, or sometimes if you have poor scarring or something like that. Uh, in general, the surgeries do last for life if you are happy with the result. Um, now, if you change your weight or your habits significantly, obviously you can go through the same cycle again because it's really about the stretching of the skin, gaining a lot of weight, um, or having a baby, for instance, that causes you to need to have the surgery in the first place. Uh, of course, with aging, you do lose more and more elasticity, so you will get some looseness automatically without changing your habits just from the aging process. But I would say overall that's a pretty slow process and very rare for patients just uh, based on that to, to revise. And if they did, probably be 20 to 30 years after the fact. All right, so um, if there's any other questions, I think we're done. Uh, I hope you found this informational. Thank you so much.